Let's go back home. They'll come back after some time. Don't be so lazy, Matthew. Let's take a look over there. I'm not lazy. I'm just tired of this walking around. Come on. All right. I'll come with you. And if we don't find them there, then I'm going back home. Football field? Yes, and it had a height of a five story building. Wow, that sounds amazing. Do you know the full story, Lucy? Hmm, I don't know the full story, but I have an idea. Why don't we go to the church now and ask Father John to tell us the story of Nova? That's great. Let's see who reaches the church first. Beat me if you can. See how I beat you, Matthew. No, you can't. <laughs> ha ha. Good morning, kids. Good, Good morning, morning, Father. Father. <laughs> <laughs> Father, can you tell us the story of Nova? Did he build a boat which was as high as a five-storied building? Was it true, Father? Yes, Matthew, it's true. It was called an ark and it was bigger than a football field. That's amazing, Father. Can you please tell us the story of Noah and his ark? Of course, I will. Sit down, children. In the last story, I told you how Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate the forbidden fruit. By doing this, they distanced themselves from God. Their children hated each other. The strong killed the weak. Wicked people filled the earth. God saw what a terrible place the world had become. He saw that no one cared about doing what was good anymore. But God saw one good man. His name was Noah. Noah and his family still cared about God. He listened to God and he always tried to do what God said. Father, Father, where are you? Father, let me also join you in your prayers.
You are a good boy, my son. May God bless you. Come on, son. It's getting late. Help me in getting the sheep back home. I will help you, father. Hey, you. Come here. Noah and his family had a hard life. But they loved each other very much. And they always had enough to eat. Noah never forgot that it was God who made all of these things possible. And thank you God for everything you have given to me and my family. Thank you for the strength to work hard and for the food on our table. Amen. Amen. One night after supper, everyone kissed Noah good night and went to bed. But Noah did not go to bed at his usual time. He had a strange feeling. Ah. You look sleepy, dear. Why don't you go to bed? Mm. Are you coming? Yes, dear. I don't feel tired yet. I'll take a stroll outside and come to bed soon. Noah went out of his house and started strolling around. He was feeling very strange, as if something big was going to happen. He didn't know it was God who wanted him outside to say something to him. Oh, what is this? Noah? God, is that you? Yes, Noah, it is. Please listen to the important things that I have to say to you. Noah, people do not love one another as they should. So I have decided to wash the earth with a flood and start over. This is terrible news. Don't do this, God. Don't be afraid, Noah. I'm telling you this because you are the only man who has still me in his heart. I have chosen you and your family to help me start over. Listen carefully. I want you to build a boat, Noah, an ark. After building this, you will take your wife, your sons and their wives. And you will take with you a male and female of every kind of animal on earth and birds too i'm going to make it rain for 40 days and 40 nights to destroy every living being that i have made so much to do and so little time i must wake my sons and ask them to help me Wake up, wake up my son. I have a very important thing to tell you. Oh, what is it, father? Come to the dinner table quickly. I will tell you there. This is what the God commanded me to do. But Noah, don't you think our neighbors will make fun of us? Those people in the city will also make fun of us when they find out. But father, this is impossible. None of us know how to build an ark. Not even you. Don't worry. God has taught me how to do it. I will help you, Father. Ah. Yes. If God wanted you to build an ark, then we all will stand with you. Thank you, dear. Yes, I'm serious. We are building an ark. A big, big ark. <laughs> It's okay. Go ahead and laugh. You will see.
This field is big enough. This is where we are going to build the ark. Build it from fresh sticky wood. These are sticky woods just like God asked me. The ark should be 450 feet long. 75 feet across and 45 feet high. Seal the planks with tar. And inside there should be an upper, middle and a lower deck. Make an opening all around the ark, just below the upper deck. And last, put a door on the side, big enough for the largest animals on earth to walk through. And next, Bring two of every animal on earth with you. We have finished. We have done well, my sons. Where is this old man who is building an ark on an open field? I too want to see this man who says a flood is coming. Are you that crazy old fool? My father is no fool. Oh, is it? You must be his son. <laughs> now let's take a good look at the petty boat you have made. Only a fool would build a boat in the middle of a field. Wow! Did you? Did you build this? You really are an old and crazy fool. Who would do something like this? <laughs> you must listen to what I say. Haha. <laughs> oh, is that so? You are so dumb. Let's get out of here. So much to do and so little time. Don't worry, father. They will cry one day for laughing at us. If only they were wiser. Hmm. Hmm. I'm wondering how we're going to get the animals into the boat. We need to figure out a way. Father, father, look over there. It's a miracle. And it was a miracle. God had brought one pair of every animal and bird on earth to the ark. Tigers, lions, elephants, giraffe, zebras. That's it. Everybody is here. Look, dear. I think it's going to rain now. Suddenly, the clouds began to gather and cold winds began to blow. Everybody inside. Is everything okay? Everything is fine. All clear here? Fine. I'll close the door. And as God said, it started raining heavily. Oh, 
No, I'm afraid. Don't worry, dear. God will protect us all. See? Didn't I tell you so? We did it! We did it! Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. He waited and waited and waited, but it never stopped raining. The rain covered the whole earth. It even covered the highest of the mountains. Then after 40 days and 40 nights, it stopped raining. It has stopped. The rain has stopped. Everybody listen. The rain has stopped. What? That's wonderful. Hey, hey. This is too good to be true. When do we get off? Oh dear, we will get off as soon as the water dries and we find land. What do you see, dear? What did you see? Uh, nothing but the sea, dear. Don't worry, mother. Hmm, now that's my son. But father, how will we know if there is dry land out there? Hmm, that's a good point. Hey, I have an idea. He went and bought a raven and took him to the slit in the ark. Then he let him go. No one knew that if raven found land, he will bring something back with him. Noah then waited for a long time for the raven to come back. But when the raven returned, he didn't bring anything back with him. The next day, Noah decided to try again with the dough. Come back with the good news. But the dough too came back with nothing. Noah never lost his hope as he knew God would never abandon them. After a few days, Noah let the dough go again in the hope of finding land. And this time, the dough did not come back empty-handed. It carried a branch from the olive tree. Father, this is wonderful news. There must be dry land somewhere close. Yes, son. We must be close to the dry land now. And soon enough, the ark landed on top of a very tall mountain. When it was safe enough, God told Noah to come out. Noah, you and your family and the animals can come out now. The earth is dry. Go out into the world and have many children and tell them about me. And so you know that I won't ever flood the world again. I'm going to leave a gift in the sky after it rains. This will remind you of my promise.
and so Noah and his family thanked God for everything he had done for them. Noah's children had many, many more good and strong children and they loved God very much. Wow! So that's why God made the rainbow? That's wonderful! Now let me ask you a few questions to see if you have fully understood the story. Shall I? Yes, Father. What did God tell Noah to build? An ark. That's correct. Here is a candy for you, George. Thank you, Father. Who can say what is an ark? Me. Me. An ark is a boat that was very, very big. That's the correct answer, Matthew. Here, take this candy. Now the last question. Why did God tell Noah to build the ark? I know. Yes, Lucy. God was going to flood the world with water. And that's why God asked Noah to build the ark. That's right, Lucy. It's amazing how God always protects the ones who trust His ways. Noah always listened to God. And he always tried to do what God said. And this is what pleased God. Do you also believe in God with your whole heart? Do you? Yes, Father. I believe in God. And I'll never do anything that will make my God angry. I also will obey God, Father. Yes, Father. I will. That's good. It's getting late. All of you should be getting back to your home now. We will see you tomorrow. Bye, Bye Father. Father. Goliath, I may be small in size, but I have God on my side. I've given you one last chance to surrender. If you don't, then you're going to die. What? You are not? All right, then watch this. Get ready, Goliath. You are going to lose this battle. You missed it. You missed it, George. No, I didn't. Didn't you see? The stone touched him. No, it didn't. Now give me the sling. Yes, George. I saw it too. The stone didn't touch Goliath. All right. Now let's see if you can touch him. Ah, uh, haha, did you see that? Yes, I did, Matthew. Haha, -ha, the stone went in the opposite direction. It did? Haha, -ha, yes. Don't worry, you can try again next time. I think there is something wrong with this link. Good evening, kids. Hey, look, Father John is here. Good evening, Father. What are you doing here? Huh? Who is that? That's Goliath's father. Goliath? As in Goliath from David and Goliath? Yes, father. <laughs> wow, that's really good. And what are they doing with that cutout? I'm sorry, Goliath. We are practicing with our sling. See? Hmm, this is good. But make sure that you don't injure yourself while playing with this. We will take care, father. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David today? Yes, but aren't you playing with your Goliath? We will stop playing. Please tell us the story, Father. Oh, you're that interested, is it? Hmm, come on, let's sit there and I will tell you the rest of the story. Are you all ready? Yes, Father. After the death of Saul, David became the king. 
he returned to Hebron and ruled there. Out of the twelve tribes of Israel, only the tribe of Judah supported him. Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, was ruling the rest of Israel. Civil war raged for years, but David grew stronger and stronger. But one of David's soldiers finally managed to kill Ishbosheth and brought his head to David. Your Majesty. Yes. I wanted to present you this. I killed Ishbosheth and brought his head as a present for you. Oh no. How dare you? Ishbosheth was the son of my master Saul. What reward shall I give to you for beheading a man in his sleep? God, behead him right away. But, but your majesty, please. He was the son of my master. God, take him away. David ruled over his kingdom just and fair. The people of Israel were very happy with David. Hey, did you hear what King David did to the soldier who killed Ishbosheth? Yes, our king is fair to everyone. We are blessed to have a king like David. God is with him. We must accept him as our king. Yes, you are right. Every other tribe in Israel is impressed with his work. You were right. I've heard that all the tribes are gathering at Hebron next week to acclaim David as their king. That's wonderful. We must go there too. All the tribes of Israel liked David and they gathered at Hebron to acclaim David as their king. Praise God for giving us such a mighty king. And finally, after very long time, David became the king of the whole nation. The first thing that David did after becoming the king of Israel was to capture the city of Jerusalem, the fortress of the Jebusites. It became known as the city of David later on. We will call the city Jerusalem from today. Jerusalem, which means the city of peace. That's a good name, my lord. A good name for the city of David. Hmm. We must repair these walls. They are not strong enough. Yes, they look quite weak. We will strengthen it by using new walls and moats. Find the best craftsmen to do the work. Yes, my lord. We will start the work immediately. Only if... Hmm... What is it, my lord? Huh? It's nothing. I have been thinking a lot about bringing the Ark of Covenant to Jerusalem. That's good thinking, my lord. If we can bring the Ark to this city, then Jerusalem will become the religious capital of Israel. But first we must consult with Prophet Nathan and seek his approval. Yes, I will ask Prophet Nathan to come here and we will talk about this. In the meantime, you must start the repair works. Yes, my lord. And as per David's instructions, expert craftsmen from all over the world were brought to build the palace. They used marble to build and the fortress was made secure with moths and ram docks. But once the palace was built, David was bothered by guilt. Hmm, how can I live in this majestic palace when the Ark of Covenant is still in Hebron? I must bring the Ark of Jerusalem. I shouldn't have left the Ark there in the first place. We must bring the Ark to Jerusalem. Call the priest immediately. Yes, my lord. 
King David got the consent of priests and the ark was brought to Jerusalem. The ark reminded the Israelites of God's holiness and their need to obey him. David had to fight many battles in the early years of his reign. He was a wise soldier and a humble man who prayed for God's guidance. Prophet Nathan, my mind is disturbed. Why, my lord? All your enemies are defeated and your people are happy. And you have such a beautiful palace. This palace, that's the problem. What happened? What's wrong with this palace? How can I live in such a splendid palace when the Ark of God remain in a tent? Oh, don't worry. Our God prefers the tent. I know, but, but I want to build a beautiful house for the Lord. The most beautiful temple ever built on earth. Go ahead, do as you like. The Lord is with you. And that night, Prophet Nathan received a message from God. Nathan. Huh? Nathan. God. Hmm? Tell my servant David, from the day I brought Israelites out of Egypt, I lived in the tent. You will not build a house for me, but I will build a house for you. I will secure your throne forever and rule Israel through your son. Thank you, God. God was pleased with David and through that message, he assured that David's heir will rule Israel. What? The Ammonites are refusing to pay the tribute? Haven't they learned a lesson from last year's war? We won't tolerate this insolence anymore. My lord, let's demolish Rabbah, their capital. They will learn a lesson once we do that. Hmm. Go ahead. Surround their capital. Make sure that you don't destroy the capital. It might be of use later. Yes, my lord. I'm leaving right away. Hmm. Huh? Who is that beauty? She's such a beauty. How come I didn't know such a beautiful woman was living here? Right under my nose? Later that day, David had the woman brought to the palace. What's your name, dear? My name is Bathsheba, my lord. I am the wife of Uriah. He is one of the soldiers. Ah, Bathsheba. What a sweet name. That night, David committed a grave sin with Bathsheba, even though her husband Uriah was one of David's brave soldiers. But two months later, Bathsheba sent word to David informing him that she was pregnant. David realized that his sin was creating more problems. Where is Uriah? He is in Rabbah, my lord, along with Joab. Hmm. Ask Joab to send Uriah to me immediately. Go now. No, I made a big mistake. What can I do now? Hmm. I think I will send Uriah to his wife and make him think that it is his child. You sent for me, your majesty? Hmm. So, how is the war, Uriah? The Ammonites won't surrender, right? Yes, my lord. All of them have camped inside the fortress. We haven't attacked yet. Hmm. They will have to come out someday. Here. Drink this wine. Huh? No. Thanks, my lord. Are you refusing your king, Urea? Huh? I'm sorry.
David planned to get Uriah drunk and send him home to his wife Bathsheba. But Uriah kept refusing to go back home. Uriah, it's getting late. Why don't you go to your home now? Huh? Hmm. What's the matter? Tell me. I... I can't, my lord. Huh? But why? How? How can I go home, my lord? How can I go home to my wife when my friends and my captain is there in the battlefield? Uriah was adamant that he will not leave the palace, and he slept at the door of King's palace. David tried again to send Uriah home. But Uriah refused to leave and stood by his king. When David realized that Uriah will never leave him, he did an even more wicked thing. Uriah, give the scroll to Joab. We have waited long enough. It's time to attack. Yes, my lord. And as David planned, Uriah got killed in the battle, and he married Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. Prophet Nathan, Your Majesty, how come you came here without a notice? Is there anything urgent? Yes, my lord. A grave crime has been committed in your country. Was it? Tell me, this is what happened. There were two men living in the same city. The rich man had flocks and sheep in great abundance. But the poor man had nothing but one fine lamp. The lamp ate and drank from his cup and slept on his chest. The poor man treasured the lamp like his daughter. But one day, when a guest came to the rich man's house, he took the poor man's lamp. No! What? I will not tolerate such crime under my rule. The man who did this must die. Hmm. Then you are the man! Huh? Yes, your majesty. God wanted me to speak to you, and these were his words. You were a shepherd, and I made you a king. I blessed you with wives and children, made you rich and powerful. Oh no! Why did you disobey me? You killed Uriah and took his wife. I will stir up evil against you out of your own house. Other men will take your wives and your child born of adultery will die. Oh no! I have sinned against the Lord. Have mercy on me, O oh God, please! Please wipe away my sins, my Lord, please! David wept his heart out. His heart was broken when he realized his mistake. But in spite of his prayers, Bathsheba's son died. No! My son! Why did you take him away, my lord? Why? Don't lose heart, my dear. The Lord is punishing me for my sins. He will not abandon us. God forgave David for his terrible sin. Bathsheba had another child, and they named him Solomon. God has forgiven my sins. Solomon, my son, after me, you are going to be the king of Israel. King David had many other children, but some of his children brought great sorrow to David. Wow, that's an amazing story, Father. It's so inspiring. Yes, George. David was a God-fearing man. When Prophet Nathan pointed his sins, he readily repented and was prepared to accept any punishment. Even in the midst of calamities, he did not lose heart and firmly believed in the mercy of God. So, 
King David is a model of repentance. Now, you like the story? Yes, Father. We loved it very much. All right. Now, shall I ask you a few questions? Yes, Father. Who can tell me the meaning of Jerusalem? Jerusalem means the city of peace. Correct. That was quick, Matthew. And what was the name of David's second wife? Her name was Bathsheba, Father. Who was Bathsheba married to before becoming the wife of David? Bathsheba was married to Uriah, one of David's soldiers. What happened to Uriah? Uriah got killed in the battlefield. It was planned by David. Was David sorry for what he did? Yes, Father. He was really sorry when Prophet Nathan pointed out his sin to him. All right. Now for the last question. What was the name of David's son born out of Bathsheba? Mm, it was Solomon. Tomorrow I shall tell you his story. The story of Solomon. Goodbye. Good morning, kids. Good, Good morning, morning, Father. Hmm. Before I begin, I want to ask you something. Have you heard about the Ten Commandments? Uh, what is that? Have you heard about that, Matthew? I, I... That's all right. Do you know about the Ten Commandments, George? It is the ten laws that God gave Moses for people to follow. Hmm, very good. That's correct. So children, we are going to learn today about the Ten Commandments. I'm going to tell you the story of how God gave these commandments to Moses. Shall I start? The Hebrews who reached Egypt with Joseph enjoyed freedom and prosperity till the middle of 16th century. But with the emergence of a new dynasty, they were subjected to cruel slavery and torture. There were so many Hebrew slaves, and the Pharaoh feared they might start a rebellion against them. These Hebrews! These children of Israel, I don't like them. Yes, Your Majesty. They are terrible people. They are not like us. There are too many of them. They could start their own army. They could one day rebel against us. Yes, my lord. They could do that. I have tried everything, overloading them with work, so that they'll drop and die, doubling their taxes, everything. I must not let them grow in numbers anymore. Yes, my lord. We must not let their population grow. I must break their will this time. Break their hearts and bring them down this time. Yes, we must bring them down. Summon the gods. Go out and take every Hebrew baby and throw them into the Nile. Yes, my lord. We must throw. Uh, what? But my lord, the babies? Yes, the babies. These Hebrews must fear me. They should understand that I am their god. Now go and inform this to the commander and others. Yes, your majesty. Commander, commander. Ha 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 ha. They shall now worship me. My child, don't take him. Don't take him, please. Ah, go away. <laughs> there were cries everywhere, and it was now time. God was about to intervene and help the sons of Israel. But one mother was not willing to let her son die. My son will live. Mother, are you going to float him in the river? We have no other option if your brother has to survive. 
then this is the only way. May God guide you, my son. Nobody is going to hurt my baby brother. The basket floated for many hours and finally stopped near the pharaoh's palace. And the basket was spotted by pharaoh's daughter. Huh? What is that? Nate, bring me that basket. Baby? It's a Hebrew child, Princess. We must throw him back into the river. What? Kill this innocent baby? No! I will not let this child get killed. I will bring him up as my own son. He will be a prince over all men because he was drawn from water. His name shall be Moses. destined for great things, Moses. I feel it in my heart, my son. Moses grew up in the palace like a prince. Moses, along with Pharaoh's son, Ramesses, learned the scriptures together. He also learned to fight like a prince. On his 21st birthday, Pharaoh invited Moses to his palace to celebrate. Moses, I am so happy for you. Thank you so much. Here is your birthday gift. From now on, you will be in charge of all the Hebrew slaves in our kingdom. No. Are you happy? I am. I am so grateful. Get up. Get up. You are my son, Moses. Ugh! No, please don't. Huh? Shut up. Shut up, you lazy fool. No, please stop. Do you think you can get away with this acting? Stand up. Please. What? What's going on here? Who are you to ask? Get away, you! I told you to stop! Oh, how dare you! I am going to teach you a lesson! Moses! 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 Who are you? You... You look like me. I am Aaron, son of your nurse. So? She's not your nurse, Moses. She's your mother. What? But... But I'm the prince of Egypt. Uh... Moses... Don't you remember the basket? The blanket that mother gave you? I... I... Uh, yes. Don't you remember your sister, Miriam? Miriam? Miriam is my sister? Yes, Moses. Don't you remember anything? I... I... I have dreamt of those. 
but I never believed they were real. They are real, Moses, and I'm your brother, Aaron. My brother, my brother. Moses, we all love you, Moses, but now you must ride for your life. No, I am a prince of Egypt. I don't have to run anywhere. Take this donkey and flee while you still can. What about you, Miriam, my family? We will survive. We always have. And we, we always will. Get on the donkey and leave now. Yes, master. They will come and kill you. Please leave now. But, but... Trust me, Moses. They are here now, Moses. We will see each other again, Moses. I know it. I feel it. Moses walked for many days in the desert without food and water. He wandered aimlessly. I'm sorry, donkey. I hope we'll find some place to get water soon. What? Where are you going? Stop! What's that? are thirsty. Boo aside, I said. Stop him! You. Ah. Stop it! The women were here first. You can either fight with me or stand for your turn. Who do you think you are? Let's teach him a lesson. Here. You still want to fight? Run! Run! Are you all right? Yes, we are. Thank you so much. Can I get some water? Of course. Here. Thank you. Drink well, my friend. What's your name? Uh, Moses. I am Zipporah, daughter of the head priest Jethro. Are you a Hebrew? No. Yes, I'm a Hebrew. I'm just a stranger in a strange land. Please come with us. My father will want to thank you for saving us. Okay, I will come. Moses married Zipporah and settled in the land of Midian. He looked after the flocks of Jethro. Moses had two sons, and he was very happy and content with his life. I'm leaving, dear. I will be back by evening. Don't go too far. All right, woman. <laughs> but in Egypt, the children of Israel were being tortured. They were treated very badly, and their cries came up to God. God chose Moses to help Abraham's descendants. Hey, you little one, you have had enough to eat?
<laughs> oh, I think it's time to leave. Come on, everyone. Come here. Hey, come here. Don't go there. Stop. You be careful. Come here. What is that? I have never seen anything like that before. A fire that doesn't burn the bush. And when he reached near that bush, God spoke to him. Moses. Huh? Moses. Moses. Ah, oh, I'm here. I am. I'm right here. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. I, I have taken off my shoes. I am Yahweh, God of Israel. I am the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. I have seen the condition of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cries. I mean to deliver them out of the hands of Egyptians and bring them to the land that was promised to their fathers. I will send you, Moses, to free them, and you will bring my people to serve me upon this mountain. Who am I, Lord, to do this? If I go back to Egypt and say that I was sent by God, nobody would believe me. What do I tell them? Give the people my message, and they will follow you out of Egypt to this mountain, and then you will lead them to their true home, a land that will flow with milk and honey for them all. Do not be afraid. Do as I've instructed Moses, and I will be with you. And following God's instructions, Moses left his home, his wife and children. Do you really have to go? God has spoken. I must go. But, but you were really happy here. No, dear. I'm sorry to say this, but I wasn't really happy staying here. How could I be happy knowing that my people were being crushed in Egypt? But, but. We have talked about this. I have to go. Father, don't go. Come on, son. I have told you. I'm following God's instructions. Will we ever see you again? Of course, son. You must have faith. We will wait for you, Moses. We will wait. Bye, Father. Bye, son. We have made it. We are here. We made it here, my friend. Ah, come on, donkey. Let's sit here for some time. Here, drink some water. Moses? Who? Aaron! <laughs> my brother! Moses, you're here. Brother! Miriam? Miriam, my sister. <laughs> Baby brother? I knew we would meet again someday. But how did you know that I'll be coming? I had a dream. God told me to meet you here. It was no dream, brother. We have to do as he has commanded. 
The situation here has worsened, Moses. What happened, brother? The king died last year, and now his son Ramesses is ruling. He's ruthless, arrogant, and a slave master. He's torturing our people. Our sufferings have grown tenfold under him, Moses. Mm, all our troubles are going to end soon. We will go and see Pharaoh tomorrow. Ramesses? Yes, I haven't seen him in years. Yes, we will. Let's go to our home now. I told our people that you would be coming. I told them about the land that God promised them. Aaron, I'm glad you are with me. We are going to need all the help that we can get. I will always be by your side, Moses. Thank you, my brother. You will be staying with us, little brother. Take good rest. You have much to do tomorrow. Moses, Moses the murderer, Moses the coward. Remesis, I come on urgent business. I come as a representative of God. Representative of God, huh? Ha ha ha. And what does he have to say? God has spoken to me. The Lord God of Israel says, let my people go. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh Moses, you expect me to just let the Hebrews leave? Just like that? Because of a God who I haven't heard of wants me to? You should mind your own business and get out of here. You are pathetic in my eyes. You are a fraud. I am the God of Egypt. Show him. It's time. Behold the power of the Lord God. Son, it's just a trick. Bring our magicians. Yes, Master. Oh, a snake, is it? Here you go. Huh? Ha 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 ha! See two snakes. Even our magicians can outdo your so-called god. Our magicians are better. Hey, look! His snake is eating ours. Huh? Father? Hear me, Pharaoh. Let my people go. Tell your god that Pharaoh will not release his slaves. No! Tell your god that I'll increase their work. I will no longer give them straw to make their bricks. They will have to find their own straw. Tell your god that. You are going to suffer for this. That's enough for today, children. I will tell you the rest of the story tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Father. Hey, don't you think the story father told us yesterday was amazing? Yes, it was. Actually, I had been thinking about it the whole day. Jimmy, I was thinking about the story too. Didn't you think so? It's amazing how he left everything behind just because God told him. The rest of the story today? I think so. But it's almost time for the classes to start. We must rush now. Let's see who reaches first. 
Ha ha ha! I'll beat you this time. Ha ha! So, shall we continue with the story of Abraham? Yes, father. All right, but before beginning, I want to ask you a few questions. Shall I? Yes, father. Now, who can tell me why Abraham left Haran? Anyone? He left Haran because God told him to. That's correct. And what did God say to Abraham? God told Abraham that he will guide him to the promised land and build a great nation. Correct. And when Abraham and Lot got separated, where did they go? Lot took the fertile valley of Jordan and Abraham went to live in the hills of Canaan. That's right, Lucy. That's enough questions. Shall we begin today's chapter? Yes, Father. Once Abraham and Lot parted ways, Abraham traveled through the hills of Canaan and finally stopped at Hebron, while Lot chose the valley of Jordan because it was fertile and well watered. But the nearby city of Sodom was a very evil place. The people who lived there and everything that they said and did was evil. One day, when Abraham was resting, God spoke to him. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I will keep you from danger and give you great rewards. Oh, Abraham, come on. I'm going to give you a great reward. Look up at the sky and count the stars. I will bless you with children like stars in the sky. There will be too many to count. I am your Lord God. I gave you this land to inherit. You must offer me a sacrifice. I will do it, God. Thank you. Are you going? I must go to the altar and offer these sacrifices. Why? Did God speak to you again? Yes, dear. He spoke to me yesterday and he told me that we will have children as many as the stars in the sky. Ha <laughs> ha! Isn't that going to be amazing? Oh dear. I wish it could be true. Huh? Why are you not happy? Don't you trust what God said? Mm. It's not that. I've become too old to give birth to a child. Don't worry. It's going to happen. You must trust in God. Yes, dear. I have complete faith in our God. Now, you don't worry. Go on and offer your sacrifice. I'll come back soon. And once Abraham offered the sacrifices, God again spoke to Abraham. Abraham, you will have many descendants. They will live in a foreign country and they will work as slaves. They are going to be treated badly for years. But I will punish that nation and your descendants leave from there. They will leave with great wealth. That night God made a promise to Abraham that would last throughout ages. Yes, he told me again that we will have more descendants than stars in the heaven. Ha ha! Yes, but... No, dear. We must have faith in God's promise. Thank you, Hagar. But I'm so old. And, and thanks, Hagar. 
you you are so beautiful and and young look at her dear what is it listen to me very carefully hega is young and beautiful she is my servant i can give her to you as a second wife no no i'm sorry listen to me dear she's young and she can bear your children isn't that we wanted the most you want to do this so that we can have children yes my husband i'm happy to give her to you please agree to this please dear but you must accept this arrangement are you okay with this hager i will do anything you say that's good hager and you shouldn't object to this dear please hmm if this is what you think is the best then i am i am ready abram lay with hager and she became pregnant as soon as she knew that she was carrying abram's child she started to make fun of surai Surai put up with it for a while but it soon became unbearable. One day she lost her temper and slapped Hagar. Abraham, you have to control Hagar. Now that she's carrying your child, she despises me and and she's making fun of me all the time. I'm sorry dear, but Don't, don't stop me. The Lord our God will judge between her and me to see who's right. Hagar got really frightened and ran away into the desert. She ran for a very long time and when she got tired she stopped by a spring. She hoped that someone would come by and help her. She was crying when an angel appeared before her. Who are you? Hey girl, you must go back to Abram. You will have a son and you should call him Ishmael, which means God hears. Hey girl went back to live with Abram and gave birth to a son. They called him Ishmael. Ishmael grew up and Abraham was really fond of him. Ishmael, Ishmael, where are you? Come and collect these wood. Coming, father. Ishmael, Ishmael. Come back. Don't run. Stop. Coming father Ishmael where were you That naughty little lamb went running again and you were running behind him I know Where do you want me to put these father Tie him up and we will carry it back while we go back Yes father I think it's enough work for the day. Shall we go now, father? Yes. You take the sheep's back. I will pray for some time and I will come home after that. Abraham Bear yourself blameless in my presence. 
and I will make a covenant between you and your descendants and me. Every boy child born in your family must be circumcised when he is eight days old. Any child who doesn't do circumcision will not be my people because he has not kept my instruction. This shall be the sign of our covenant. Thank you, God. I will do as you told. As for Surai, you will now call her Sarah, which means princess. I will bless her and she will give you a son. But we have become so old. How can we have a son now? If only Ishmael could inherit some of your blessings. He will, Abraham. He will become a great nation unto himself. But Sarah will give you a son by this time next year, and you will call him Isaac, which means laughter. My everlasting covenant will be established with him. Surai, Surai, Surai. What is it, dear? Surai, God has spoken to me. He said from now on I am to be called Abraham, and you, <laughs> you are to be called Sarah, which means princess. That's wonderful, dear. I know, I know, and yes. He told me that from now on every male child in our family must be circumcised. Circumcised? But why? It has to be done to show that they belong to our God. Ha <laughs> ha! This is wonderful. Then you should start with you. And yes, we'll have to get Ishmael circumcised too. Yes, yes. Where is Ishmael? He is inside. I'll get him. Ishmael, Ishmael, come out. What is it, father? Come, Ishmael. We have to get you circumcised. Circum what, father? Come with me. This is God's command for us all. <clears throat> and many months later, Abraham was visited by three angels. Who could that be? Sarah, get some water. We have some visitors. Yes, dear. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, my lord, my lord, please do not pass her home without stopping. Please rest a while with your servant and kindly take some food before you proceed. Sure, we'll be glad to. Thank you. I'll get you something to eat, so you'll be refreshed before you go on your way. Sarah, special visitors from God is here. Hagar, get some water to wash their feet. What is Sarah? She's in the tent. What are they talking about? Sarah will give birth to a child by this time next year. What? <laughs> I'm 80 years old. And he is beyond 90. And now we'll have a child. <laughs> Why did Sarah laugh and say that she is too old to have a son? Is anything too hard for God? I... I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have laughed. What I said is going to happen. We have to leave now. May I accompany you part of the way? I've heard that the people in Sodom and Gomorrah are very evil. The sufferings in those cities is great 
I'm going to see for myself if what I've heard is correct. If it is correct, then I will destroy the city. You would destroy good people along with wicked people. What if there are 50 good people in the city? Would you destroy them with the rest? If I find 50 good people in Sodom, I will spare that city. But if you find only 40? For the sake of 40, I will spare the city. Lord, please don't be angry with me. But what if there is only 30, or 20, or even 10? If there are 10 good people in Sodom, will you destroy the city even then? If I can find 10 good and righteous people in Sodom, then I'll spare the entire city for them. Thank you, Lord. You are so kind. Thank you. That night, the angels sent by God entered the city of Sodom. Take this! Huh? Huh? Who are these men? Hey, you! You, stop there! Where do you think you are going? Who are you guys? You guys look funny in those big robes. Ha <laughs> ha! Why don't you answer? You! You think you are so tough? Stop! Stop! You stop! Stop! Huh? Look who is here! Lord! Haha! <laughs> you think you can stop us? No! I mean, look over there! What's that? Get in! Quick! Hey, Lord! Open the door! Mm. You... You should stay here at my house. You shouldn't go into the city at this hour. Thank you for your kindness. Send them out, Lord. If you let them out, then we'll break the door and come inside. Please go away. I'm not sending them out. Please. We just want to have some fun with them. <laughs> oh, should we break the door? Let me take care of this. No matter what happens, stay away from that door. You are in great danger. Oh no! If you want them, then you have to go through me first. Get out of my way. We'll do worse things to you than we are going to do to your visitors. Move aside, you! Ugh. Break down the door. We'll get all of them. Are you? Uh, uh, I can't see. I'm blinded. Uh, oof, I'm blinded too. Ah, uh, what is happening? This is some strange magic. Run! Uh, what power is this? Run! Ah! Uh. Run! What? What just happened? Lord, do you have anyone else here? Sons or daughters, sons-in-law or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. What? Uh, destroy? The evils of the city are too great. The Lord has seen the evils here and has sent us to destroy the city. My two daughters are engaged to the men in this city. I... I... Go and get them. Yes, you take care of everyone here. I'll come quickly.
I'm telling you, we must leave now. God has sent some angels to destroy the city. You are crazy. <laughs> and why would God destroy the city? God has seen what the city has become. He has seen the evils here. That sounds ridiculous. No, no, the angels. The angels told me to save my family. Come on. Lord, have you started drinking? <laughs> That's the best joke I've heard in a long time. <laughs> I'm not joking. If you don't come, then you'll die here. Die? You need to get some sleep, old man. What happened? There are they. They didn't come. But didn't you tell that the angels were here? Yes. Yes, I told them many times. They didn't believe me. They laughed and said I was drunk. It is almost time. You must leave now. Run from the city. Don't stop until you get far away into the hills. Run for your lives and don't look back. Yes, Lord. Come, dear. Let's leave. Go now and remember, don't look back. We will not look back, my Lord. Come, come. Let's leave. Keep running and whatever happens, don't look back. When the angels could not even find 10 good people in the city, they destroyed the city to ashes. Lord and his family kept running away without turning back. Ah, ah. Oh dear. Ah. But Lord's family did not listen to him. She looked back to see what was happening and as soon as she looked, she freezed and turned into a pillar of salt. Oh no! What happened, Father? Nothing. Don't turn back. Keep running. <sighs> Not even ten righteous people in all of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that concludes the story of the twin cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. Did you all enjoy the story? Yes, Father. Very good. Do you have any questions from the story? No questions? Shall I ask you a few questions then? Yes, Father. Alright. When Abraham pleads with God to spare Sodom, what was Abraham's main argument? Lucy? Father, Abraham asks God to spare Sodom for the sake of 10 righteous men living in Sodom. That's correct. And did God agree to Abraham's pleading? Yes. God said that he'll free Sodom if they were 10 good men. That's great, Lucy. Now the next question. Why did Lot's son-in-law die? Father, I can answer that. Yes, George. When Lot wants his son-in-law to flee from Sodom, they thought he was joking and mocked at him. Yes, George, that's correct. And here is that last question. Who can tell me what happened to Lot's wife? Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt when she looked back. That's right, Matthew. Very good. And that's it for today. We'll meet again tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.